What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we are back with some more Enter the Dragon type Wi-Fi competition battles going live narrations of course. Um, my record right now is 9 and 4. We are at 13 total battles. I've had quite a few off camera. Uh, I had a really long work shift today so I want to kind of get back in the right mindset for things. I uh, had some interesting battles but I will be post narrating those later on so I can really talk about my thought process. Uh, but in this battle, we see my opponent with a very balanced team. We see, of course, the old school Zapdos and Garchomp combination, or of course, Thunderous is another popular choice. Allowing for Discharge and Earthquake shenanigans. I'm not worried about those as long as I have Hitmontop because of Wide Guard. Uh, we might also see some Heat Waves from that um, Charizard there. I'm not sure what he's going to lead off with, so we're going to lead off my uh, Darkrai can outspeed everything that he has, so we're going to lead off with Darkrai and hit him on top with the Alga and Altaria in the back. Um, that allow me to fake something out, wide guard hit, um, and of course I can put something to sleep too. So, uh, and I also have pretty good coverage against his entire team with Darkrai as well, uh, barring the Charizard Y. I'm assuming it's Y. It could be X. I saw a Charizard X in a previous battle, but that one, of course, my opponent had a Kyogre. So it would make sense to bring a Charizard Y to that type of battle. So we see dual flying type leads for my opponent here. I'm definitely expecting um, this to be a Charizard Y. Uh, hmm. It's very likely that Zapdos could have Lumberry too. So in this situation, we are definitely just going to Dark Void and uh, let's just go ahead and fake out the Charizard. Well, the Charizard actually is very likely to protect as it Mega Evolves. So we're going to fake out the Zapdos just because it's so bulky. That way it won't get off any weird Thunder Waves or anything. So the Charizard does end up protecting like I predicted. Uh, let's see if Zapdos protects. No, okay, good. So we will get a chance to put Zapdos to sleep here, hopefully. That fake out crits, not a big deal there. Um, interesting that the Charizard didn't Mega Evolve right away. I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, and now he is kind of susceptible on this next turn here. Because he only has, if he tries to protect again, I guess he could go for that. But I don't really know why he would do that. So he might go for Heat Wave here. Uh, and Mega Evolve. I'm not really sure what to expect from him, honestly. So instead, I guess I'm just going to Dark Pulse the Charizard while I Wide Guard with Hitmonchan. Or I could Helping Hand. That would be fun too. Just kind of blast him as hard as I could. I also had the Flinch Chance. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and Helping Hand um, that Dark Pulse there. So it is Charizard Y. Maybe I should have gone for the, uh, the Wide Guard there, expecting the Heat Wave. Charizard Y gets a pretty sizable special defense boost. So that's a little bit annoying. Um... But even so, it should not be able to one-hit KO my Hitmonchan. And Darkrai hitting this Charizard Y that hard should really put a, a pretty large dent in it. Um, furthermore, Charizard Y can't really touch um, Mega Altaria. So I had that going for me as well. And yeah, I definitely should have Heat Wave there. I mean, I should have Y Guarded there. But fortunately, I get one more attack off here. Uh, I could, of course, put... Well, wait a second. Tailwind, okay. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, so I could, I'm definitely gonna wide guard here and try to put him back to sleep. Um, Cause Darkrai is kind of on its last legs here. So we're gonna go ahead and wide guard cause I haven't revealed it yet. And that's the nice thing about wide guard. It's kind of iffy on whether or not I may have it. And so holding it until a couple of little, a li just a few turns later can sometimes make a huge difference. So here we see double heat wave wide guard protecting both of my Pokemon and Dark Void putting both of his Pokemon back to sleep. That was a fantastic turn for me. I'm happy I did not use Wide Guard earlier. Unfortunately, I did miss the Charizard with the Dark Void, uh, but I did put the Zapdos back to sleep, so that's pretty pretty nice to see right there. Um, now, he could go for uh, Heat Wave again, but now that he knows I have Wide Guard, I don't think he's going to do that necessarily. And now is actually going. I'm going to take this opportunity to switch out to my, um, hmm. This is not a bad spot to switch out to Altaria in, 
Charizard Y typically carries Heat Wave, maybe Overheat. Uh, we know he has Protect and Heat Wave already, so he probably doesn't have Overheat actually. Um, Solar Beam, and maybe Ancient Power or Dragon Pulse. If he goes for Dragon Pulse now and I switch an Altaria, that'll be bad news. So in fact, instead of switching out, we're just gonna stay in here and um, I'm not really sure what to do. I don't think it matters if I stay in though, honestly. So we're just gonna Dark Pulse and we will Y guard in case he tries to go for it one more time, uh, just in case. He's probably not going to, but just in case, there's no reason to, to risk it there. Uh, so he does just go for Dragon Pulse. I'm happy I did not switch out because I was highly considering it. Um, but that would have sucked to switch out there. So now I get a free switch into my Altaria. Uh, and then I can Mega Evolve, which will make me immune to his Dragon Pulse because I gained the Fairy Typing. Um, so yeah, I like that a lot better than just switching it in and having it die to a Dragon Pulse. Now it would have been really nice if that Dark Void hit. I have been missing that move so much. I miss it every single battle at least once. Really, really annoying, uh, but sometimes, you know, what can you do? You just have moves like that sometimes. So we're just gonna get a Helping Hand boosted Hyper Voice off here. I don't expect to do to take much damage, rather, from the Charizard Y. He may target down Hitmontop with a Dragon type or maybe even a Solar Beam, but even with that, he's not gonna be able to one-hit KO Hitmontop, I do not believe, so. Hopefully, he does actually go for Solar Beam. I definitely don't think that's gonna KO Hitmontop. I will be surprised if it does, uh, just because of the, I think I have max HP 94 something special defense in this build. So, and he does not, we're gonna get a helping hand boosted off Hyper Voice here. I think the helping hand was needed to KO the Charizard Y there. And I am also able to KO Zapdos and his Tailwind should go down at the end of this turn if I counted those turns correctly. So we're in and I, it does go down, perfect. So we're in a very good position here to take on his Arceus and his um, uh, remaining Pokemon. Or was it Arceus? No, it's Garchomp and, uh, wow, I'm completely blanking out. Yay for being tired. There we go, Garchomp and Frostlass. Um, now in this situation, I'm very tempted to switch out Hitmontop and bring it back in, just so I can intimidate the Garchomp. Uh, but I don't wanna bring it in on an, I don't wanna bring in my Dialga on an Earthquake, so. We're going to, let's just Hyper Voice, and then I will Wide Guard with Hitmonchan just in case he tries to go for an Earthquake. I don't expect him to go for Blizzard or anything like that, uh, but I wanna keep him honest. I wanna force him to target one Pokemon here, basically. No spread moves from my opponent. Uh, he could also go for just a Ghost type move, but nothing Altaria does. Okay, he does go for Blizzard, which interesting that he's using Blizzard um, in the in the sun or the the clear skies rather, just because Blizzard has decreased accuracy in those conditions. So I'm happy I just stayed in and went for the safe play because I was able to block both the Rock Slide from Garchomp and Blizzard. If Blizzard even hit, it has such low accuracy in the sun. Uh, and so now at this point, there's nothing my opponent can do. We're just gonna finish him off with a Hyper Voice, and uh, we'll just Helping Hand that Hyper Voice just in case there. Um, just just to really obliterate, just pure obliteration. Uh, he's gonna go for Destiny Bond, he's gonna take me with him, but I am going to end up winning the battle. Uh, so that actually was a good match. Him on top really shined there. It stayed on the field the entire match, just using wide guard, basically. And that is why I wanted it on this team. A lot of people say that him on top is outclassed by Scrafty or by Hariyama, but it really is the best of both worlds. And on top of that, it spins on its freaking head and dances. What, what's not to like, what's not to enjoy, unless you're standing too close and he kicks you in the face, that's your fault. That's not Hitmontop's fault, that's your fault. Um, I, I don't know why I'm so passionate about being kicked in the face by Hitmontop. But what is important is that it's a situation that you may, in fact, face. And hope that instead of getting triple kicked, you get wide guarded. Uh, so anyways, that rant aside, wow, that was a hell of an aside there. Uh, we have another opponent here. Primal Grudon, eh, a little bit annoying to see. We're definitely going to need a lead hit him on top. Um, that'll allow me to Y guard and block attacks from not only Primal Grudon, but Sylveon. Uh, 
we're gonna leave Primal Groot on and Darkrai. That way, when he does his uh, Rage Powder shenanigans, it won't matter, I'll just put him to sleep. So, hopefully I can actually hit the attack this time. That would be grand. Um, and of course, I do have Sludge Bomb for Sylveon, if I could wide guard and then smack it with a Sludge Bomb. That is just Dark Poison, Drapion, or Skun Tank, I guess, but Drapion is a lot cooler than Skun Tank. It's just really, really good coverage. With Steel no longer resisting Dark, the only things that basically resist Dark Poison are like some obscure fighting, um, uh, some obscure fighting types, and then you also, of course, have other Dark and Poison types. So. We're probably gonna see, oh, we don't see Groudon in the beginning here. I'm gonna see, okay. So that is actually fine by me. I'm gonna get an opportunity to, uh, I guess I could, I don't wanna risk missing and then him. So we're gonna fake out the Sylveon here just in case I miss the, uh, the Dark Void cause that would be really lame. And we're gonna go in Dark Void. And I expect to protect from someone. No one protected. That is kind of ballsy. Maybe someone has a Lumberry? Okay, there is the Rage Powder, but I don't care about your Rage Powder. I'm targeting you both right now. Uh, so hopefully I don't miss anyone. I wish that it would tell you who you missed before the animation went off. Because I hate it when the animation goes off and it's like, yeah, I sucked both of them into the void. And then it's like, yeah, you missed the other person. It's like, no, I didn't. I did not miss them. I saw what happened. Okay, so Sylveon does have the Lumberry. Oh, the Chesto Berry. But that is exactly why I went ahead and targeted it down with Fake Out. Um, we're just going to Wide Guard here, expecting some sort of spread move from Sylveon. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and target the Amoongus, because that's more likely to be annoying than Sylveon. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and target the Amoongus with an Ice Beam. And I'm expecting him to hyper voice, is what I'm expecting. So we'll see if that's actually what happens here. Uh, hopefully he does hyper voice. Since he had Chestoberry though, we know he's not Specs, which I would prefer Specs because then they just lock themselves in the hyper voice and then hit him on top, beats them all day. Um, but one more Ice Beam will take out the Amoongus, which is really really nice. He does go for the hyper voice. I am very happy to see that, and the Amoongus stays asleep. This is awesome. So now he might switch up and go for a single targeting move. He can't go for Psy Shock against Darkrai and that won't really hurt him on top that badly either. Uh, Sylveon sometimes carries coverage like Hidden Power Ground and also use Shadow Ball. Neither of my two Pokemon care, care about those two options very much. So we're just gonna get a chance to go for a Helping Hand boosted Sludge Bomb, I think. No, no, we should just go for, well, is he just gonna go for hyper? He might switch out too, uh, is another possibility. Mm -hmm. It would be cool to preserve Darkrai. Hit him on top can't hit either of the things that are in front of him though either, is a thing. Um, so, hmm. We're just going, I'm really hesitant to helping hand here. Okay, no, let's just play it safe like we did in the last match. I have no reason not to. We're going to go in and helping hand and we're going to let's just dark void again. Why not? Um, just because I guess, I don't know. Hopefully I can hit the Sylveon and then in that, at that point, Amoongus might wake up here and put something to sleep, uh, which would be a little bit annoying, I guess. No, it doesn't wake up. Awesome. Oh wait, no, that was a Sylveon. Okay, and Amoongus stays asleep. Perfect. So now I'm able to switch out Hitmon top, actually. Um, or I don't, I guess I don't have to. Cause I kind of put him in a position where he's going to lose something here. So we're gonna go ahead and go for the Helping Hand boosted Sludge Bomb. And we're gonna smack, or though, granted, granted, yeah, no, we're gonna go ahead and go for the Sludge Bomb. Onto Sylveon. Just because that's awesome. And then that way, even if he wakes up and uses Rage Powder, it's still going to uh, be enough to finish off the Amoongus. 
So he's not going to go for follow me. He's going to he's probably going to try to put something to sleep here, I would imagine. I'm able to take out Sylveon, which is a very, very nice threat out of the way. I imagine Grudon might be coming in next. Uh, oh, he went for Synthesis. Oh, I've never seen an Amoongus use Synthesis before. That is really interesting. And actually would pair really, really well with Grudon because Grudon, of course, puts up the sun. 75% recovery on an Amoongus. That's pretty annoying. So, uh, yeah, I did need the Helping Hand boost there to knock out the Sylveon. Just because Sylveon's bulk is incredibly high. And I don't know if I agree with him using Synthesis, though. He had an option there to put something to sleep. Uh, I'm assuming he has Spore. This, of course, could also be Scarf Salamence, which would be unfortunate. Um, it could also be a Mega Salamence. If it is a Mega Salamence, I outspeed it right now. But if it's a Scarf Salamence, it might KO me in the face. So what we're going to do is go for a Helping Hand boosted Ice Beam. No, wait, or do I want to? I could, of course, go for Dark Void again. Um, but Helping Hand boosted Ice Beam basically ensures a KO at this point. So I think I'm just going to do that. And then that way, if he Rage Powders, then... No, the safer move is actually to go ahead and Dark Void, I suppose. Uh, and I'm going to actually use this opportunity to switch out into my Dialga. Just because he doesn't fear anything. He doesn't fear too much at this point at all. And we're just going to go for Dark Void, assuming that he's not Scarfed. We're going to see if he's a Mega Salamence, which I would like. I would really like to see Mega Salamence, actually. Because uh, I will outspeed that. And if he goes to sleep, that would be fantastic. That would be just, just delicious. As Shofu says, mmm, yummy. It is a Mega Salamence. We might get to eat some dreams here. Just some... I, I made you a nightmare, but I eat it at dreams. So Mega Salamence will protect. This is good because I can put the Moongas back to sleep. I would love that. Uh, just because I, I basically got in... Um, he could go for Earthquake with Mega Salamence, but I don't know if that will KO um, Dialga is the main thing. So uh, I'm in an okay position here. I'm going to just go straight for uh, the Draco Meteor from my Dialga. And why not double target Salamence? Why not? So we're just going to Ice Beam here. I'm expecting this to KO, but Salamence actually has some pretty decent bulk. It does KO. Awesome. Don't have to deal with Mega Salamence. And now we get to hit the Amoongus with the Draco Meteor, which actually probably won't kill it, even though I'm holding the Adamant Orb. Um, that being said, putting it in a position where it's forced to Synthesis up or die again, I like that. So, oh, I do. Oh, I get a critical hit. I don't know if that mattered or not, honestly. Um... That's interesting. I don't I don't really know if that mattered or not. So now his uh, Primal Grudon is going to come in. I really think he should have switched in Primal Grudon instead of switching in Salamence. Uh, just because he would have been able to put more offensive pressure on me. Grudon is so bulky that it would have lived any hit from either of my Pokemon. Instead of bringing in Salamence to die to the double target, basically. But that's okay. Doesn't matter either way. And of course I can bring back in Hitmon top here. He's gonna get the Intimidate and I'll have the ability to wide guard. Uh, in this situation, we're just gonna Earth Power. And there's no, I'm not going to risk missing the uh, Dark Void. So we're just gonna Dark Pulse. Okay, he forfeits, so awesome. Yeah, I wasn't going, there's, that's kind of that, sh that sportsmanship thing for myself too. At a certain point in the match, there's no point in stalling. And especially since this isn't like a real tournament with, uh, you know, cash money at the end or anything like that. If that were the case, all safe plays all day unless it's a make it or break it situation. And then YOLO strats, as uh, AGDQ says often. Sometimes you just have to go for it. You just have to use the YOLO strats. Uh, so now we're, we're at 11 and 4. Finally broke the 1600 point barrier. And of course my opponent has broken it long ago with a rating of 1641. That's fine, just flaunt it. Flaunt it if you've got it. Wow, what a powerful team. Okay then, so Rayquaza, Grudon, Heatran, and Togekiss. I imagine he's going to lead with Grudon. Um, hmm, I'm not sure what he's gonna lead with, honestly. 
Uh, I, c I could see a Grudon Rayquaza lead, maybe. Uh, we're going to lead with Darkrai Hitmontop, just because spread moves are a thing. And that'll allow me to put him to sleep, so. And that'll also allow me to intimidate, which makes it a lot easier for my other Pokemon to switch in. So, that'll be the plan which the man uses at this time. Uh, if you guys have encountered um, any other Altaria in your battling, I've been really pleased with how Mega Altaria has performed so far. But let me know kind of if you've encountered any of them yourself there, because I've only fought one other Mega Altaria, which I was a little bit sad about. You have to, you have, to have the little poof balls, the little puff clouds. So right here, I do outspeed both of my opponent's Pokemon. Um, I'm going to fake out Togekiss on the off chance that it is in a Scarf Togekiss, because that would be annoying. Um, and then we'll go from there, is the thing. We will go from there. We might see a Protect here from one of these two Pokemon too. Darkrai can carry Focus Blast, which Heatran doesn't really want to take. Uh, of course, Hitmontop has Fighting type moves, so uh, it, we might just see a variety of things here. So he decides to bring in Primal Groudon. I'm, that is not good. Uh, he's obviously bringing in the sun to power up something here, but hopefully the dark void hits and I don't have to worry about it. So what, what's Heatran going for here? Cause now my fake out is basically not going to do anything. So fake out hits Grudon and Grudon laughs about it. He, he chortles and it's a scarf Heatran. That's unfortunate. Alrighty then. That is definitely a scarf Heatran if it outsped Darkrai. So should have should have definitely um went ahead and went for the fake out on the Heatran, but that's okay. Cause now I know he's scarfed, he's locked into that move. I can actually go ahead and bring in Dialga and hopefully KO something with an Earth Power here. Uh, he could switch in Rayquaza, which would be a problem. Um, hmm. he could also switch into Togekiss. So. Either one of those would be an issue. We're just gonna go ahead and go for Earth Power. Actually, hmm, is he gonna stay in with Heatran? Cause it could Draco Meteor that Heatran slot. No, we're just gonna Earth Power. Let's just Earth Power the Groudon slot and we're gonna Wide Guard otherwise here. Cause I'm pretty sure he's gonna go for Precipice Blades. I don't really wanna deal with that. So he's gonna switch out Heatran probably for Togekiss. And there's Togekiss. Here's my wide guard, hopefully to block his precipice blades. I don't want to take them. Uh, he goes for fire punch, predicting the wide guard. Oh, what a great prediction on my opponent's part. That hurt. Uh, also, his Grudon outspeeds my um, my Pokemon, so that's a thing. At this level, it is going to be most prudent to go for. Hmm. We're just gonna go for Flash Cannon onto the Togekiss, and we're going to low kick Grudon, because I should be able to KO it at this level of HP. I expect Togekiss to use Follow Me, which will be fine. Uh, he's probably expecting me to just Y guard again, just in case. So we're gonna go for a little bit more of an aggressive play this time. We'll see if it plays out. I'm kind of behind, because I thought the Togekiss might be Scarfed when the Heatran was, so I'm a little bit behind right now. Uh, he's thinking about his play, probably seeing... Okay, so we just went straight for Fire Punch again. That's fine. Um, Togekiss should not be able to one-hit KO my uh, Hitmontop, no matter what it does. Dazzling Gleam definitely won't be enough. So I should be able to take out the Groudon here, which will be nice. Um, I'm going to get my Citrus Berry. Citrus Berries look... Uh, all the berries look like chocolate candy when they open up in battle. Kind of an interesting animation there. And so finally I'm able... Okay, good. Now I'm in a decent spot here because Grudon was kind of the only thing that could handle, because I can bring an Altaria now and protect as I Mega Evolve. And then hopefully if he decides to bring in um, the Heatran here, then I will be able to low kick it hopefully because uh, I think he, he'd go straight for the Flash Cannon onto Altaria. That's what I'm expecting him to do rather. Um, yeah, I and I, I don't I have a very slim chance of winning this, but I'm definitely not going to forfeit because why would I do that? So out comes the Heatran again, that's what I expected. And we get Altaria out and about. 
So, yeah, we're definitely just gonna mega evolve and protect. And then we will low kick those fools, those foolish fools. Making sure not to low kick our own Altaria by accident in the same way that I moon blasted my own Rayquaza in the face. Battling after work is just such a poor idea because it's like my brain's not all there. It's just very fuzzy at times. It's kind of sad. So I'm expecting him to just go for a Dazzling Gleam and uh, a Flash Cannon here. But we'll see if that's what happens, hopefully. Flash Cannon, yes, I called that. Dazzling Gleam, won't KO. And I'll get a low kick off, which will be fantastic. Um, pink. Oh man, delicious damage there. That did that did a great amount. I'm very happy with that amount of damage. So now we're gonna hyper voice here. And we're gonna helping hand that hyper voice just to really, of course he could go for dazzling gleam again. In which case Y guard would be nice to block it. Uh, so we're gonna go for Y guard here, hoping that he goes for a dazzling gleam again. Cause he is gonna flash cannon again. We know that for sure. And I went, and this is, um. I think I had enough. Yeah, I guess Heatran is considerably more bulky than a Mega Kangaskhan. Uh, oh, he targets down Hitmontop with the Flash Cannon. Interesting. Very interesting. So I'm going to go for Hyper Voice here. It may be able to KO. Yes, I'm able to pick up the KO on Heatran, even though it quad resists it. Um, I kind of, I don't know. Dazzling Gleam won't work this turn because of my Wide Guard. So very nice. So we only see Togekiss going for Dazzling Gleam. Is it Specs? I don't, it wasn't really doing Specs damage. Um, I'm not really sure. It's hard to say. But now I should, it's, it's, I don't think I can live anything that they both go for. Cause they both outspeed my Mega Altaria. Uh, so if he goes for Dragon Descent and I live, then I still get hit by the Dazzling Gleam. Not gonna help too much. Uh, so I think I lost, but we're gonna go for it anyway. Okay, so something's protecting. That's fine. And Hyper Voice is not going to KO the Togekiss, of course. May, can I get a crit? I cannot. I need one more Hyper Voice. Oh, nope. I need two more. Yeah, Citrus Berry the whole time. That's a very bulky boat on the Togekiss there. Uh, but it's good, though. At least it doesn't have specs. That's good to see. Whoa, that did a lot of damage. Alrighty, then. Yeah, I definitely lost. But, you know, I think I played decently. He really caught me off guard with Scarf Heatran in the beginning. When it looked like it might have been Scarf Togekiss by the, the team built. So, unfortunato, that's my first loss of this evening. That's okay though, I'm in a much better mood than when I first started playing a little while ago. I was very angsty. Very angsty indeed. Ah oh boy, and that's a Life Orb Dragon Ascent. I don't even, I may have had issues living that um, from a quarter health. So, I ended up losing that one. Not, I don't feel too bad about that loss though. Just because he did, he just surprised me with Scarf Heatran. If I had faked out the Heatran in the beginning and then put it to sleep, we'd have been talking a completely different type of battle. So I'm going to get one more battle for you guys on camera here. Hopefully it's not too long. Oh no, with that loss, I slipped back below the 1600. Now I'm at 1590. With 11 and 5, 16 matches played. I would like to at least have a 2 1 win ratio. That would just be preferred. We have another opponent here just starting their challenge for the Enter the Dragon Type Chipe Challenge. The Enter the Dragon Type Chipe Challenge. There's a lot of extra letters in there. See if you can pull those all out. Because I just had a, just, I almost said the phrase, I just had a mouthful. But then I just hear thousands of people across the internet going, that's what she said. And you take that shit back. Alright, anyways though. We see Gardevoir, Dragalge, interesting. Aurorus and Primal Groudon. Hmm. So in this matchup, uh, I don't, well, no, Darkrai is still the best thing to start off with just because I can put everything to sleep. And we're going to start off with Hitmontop as well, just so once again, I can fake out the thing that I think might have the way to live or rather the way to dodge the Dark Void. Uh, his team is also relatively slow with Gardevoir being the fastest thing. Maybe a Scarf Gardevoir? It's hard to say. Uh, Mega Gardevoir would also fit in pretty well with the Pokemon that he has. So, we're going to find out. I think he's going to lead Gardevoir, though. And he does end up leading Gardevoir and Aurora. It's interesting. 
Aurora's will not like to take low kick from Hitmontop. I really like those little extra um, kind of niche rolls that uh, the, ooh, we see air balloon there. So that's good to know. But I can pick up a lot of little niche KOs, of course, with the right moves. So I don't think I can KO Gardevoir with a Sludge Bomb outright because it's not stab. So we're just gonna fake out and Dark Void. And I'm going to fake out the Gardevoir. Because I'm not very worried about Aurorus. So Gardevoir, oh no, Aurorus uses Protect. Interesting, probably trying to keep that balloon intact. I am okay with that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Gardevoir and hopefully put it to sleep. Nope, I miss. So that's fine. Um, well, it's not really fine. But now, hmm. Since I missed, but I now know that he's not Scarf, so we're just gonna go for a Sludge Bomb onto the God of War, and we're going to use Helping Hand as well. And that should be enough to finish off the God of War. So he's gonna switch out the Aurorus, probably for Grudon, I would imagine. Uh, yes. And what's going to happen with God of War over there is the question. God of War. I think he's just going to attack there. And I still haven't revealed Y Guard. What you just like so much for Primal Grudon and Primal uh, Kyogre. It's just him on top just doesn't care about those Pokemon as much with Y Guard. So we have Helping Hand here. He did not protect. Or I'm assuming he didn't. And Sludge Bomb. He doesn't have a Sash anymore if he had one. Sludge Bomb is able to KO it before it does anything. Perfect. So now I get to see what he's going to bring out again. And I have the opportunity to Dark Void. Um, I think I'm just going to Wide Guard, though, expecting Precipice Blades or something like that. Uh, yeah, we're just going to Wide Guard and Dark Void. Because why not? Then I can Low Kick on the next turn. And uh, Dark Pulse the Grudon, so... And we know that Grudon cannot have a held item because it's holding the red orb, so I don't have to worry about it having Lumberry or something like that. Assuming I hit, you guys have seen me miss Dark Void several times now. So at this point, I don't even need to complain about it anymore. It's just, it is what it is. I'm going to miss a lot of Dark Voids. 80% accurate. No one cares. That's fine. That's fine. So a wide guard here. Let's hope for Precipice Blades coming my way. Um, and he won't get a chance to attack at all if I put both of his Pokemon to sleep which would be preferred, but even if he does get it off. Up, oh, I missed again with the Dark Void. Uh, he went for Fire Blast, did not see that coming. He's probably gonna hit Darkrai, yep. Wow, that sucked. That just sucked. I, if I just hit the Dark Void, why is that so hard? It's 80% freaking accurate and I can't hit it when I really freaking need to. I couldn't tell I'm annoyed. Ever so slightly annoyed. That's fine. We're going to go out into Dialga here and go for a helping hand boosted uh, Earth Power. And hopefully that's enough to clear out this Grudon. I don't expect it to have Protect. Grudon don't usually run Protect. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get that helping hand going there. Of course, now... Well, he knows that I have Y Guard now, too. Um, yeah, we're just going to go for the helping hand boosted... Because I don't think he's going to go for his press of his blaze knowing that I have wide guard. So yeah, we're going to go helping hand boosted earth power is where we're going to go. If that were a destination on map quest, it would be precisely here. It would be right here. Surprisingly, I outspeed. Did not see that coming. And I'm able to KO it with the helping hand boosted earth power. That's what you get for not falling asleep. If you had just fallen asleep, it's trying to sing you a lullaby. And you would have been so much better off. So we see Hyper Voice coming out from Aurorus here. Of course, Refrigerate turns that into an Ice type attack, which is why it is not resisted by Dialga. But it kind of does a meh damage. Um, yeah, not again, not particularly worried there. And with Dragalge out here, I say I d I'm I'm really just gonna go for a Draco Meteor on the Dragalge and. We're going to low kick the Aurorus. I don't expect... Okay, he is going to protect with the Dragalge. Uh, I might be able to outspeed the Aurorus, depending on its investment. 
I don't know if I want to hit KO it though. I do want to hit KO it. It is four times weak, yes, but I only, I don't have a maximum investment there. So sorry about that little break in the action there. My I was recording for too long, but this is going to be the last battle anyway. So and now to finish things off here, we're in our Earth Power, and we're just going to helping hand that Earth Power. That way, I don't have to worry about missing. Ah, uh, the the finer things in life. I just I, I like it when I play well and I am rewarded for playing well, instead of just repeatedly missing. Um, ah, my iPhone is full of data. Ah, I'm gonna have the audio from this. It doesn't matter. I'll have the audio. I have the audio. Uh, even if I don't have the video, I have the audio. Darn it. But anyways, though, he just Draco Meteor my Dialga. And then he died to his life orb after taking, somehow he managed to take uh, Helping Hand boosted Earth Power because Dragalji has decent special defense. But anyways though, guys, that's going to be it for today. I am going to sign off here with a record of 17 and 5. Not terrible. Not as good as I wanted to be. But that's okay. Hopefully I'll get a chance to get some more matches in tonight. Um, if I don't, oh darn. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.